This is Rebecca from chemistryismyjam.com. In this video, we're going to look at the parts of the periodic table. The periodic table is so much more than just a list of elements. We can use the location of an element on the table to indicate the properties of the element, to tell us what other elements it might react with. There's just a lot of information dealing with the arrangement of the periodic table that is so useful to a chemist. In terms of the arrangement, you should be aware of what the rows and the columns on the periodic table are called and what they tell us. Horizontal rows on the periodic table are called periods, and the elements in the same period have the same number of energy levels. Aluminum, for example, is in the third period, and it has three energy levels. All of the elements in period three have three energy levels. The vertical columns on the periodic table are called groups, and elements in the same group tend to have similar properties. A great example of that is the group where copper is located. In the group where copper is located, you'll also find silver and gold. These are three metals that we very often make jewelry out of. They are solid at room temperature. They are shiny, which means they have luster. You can draw them into wires, so they are great metals to use for jewelry. They all have similar properties and can be found in the same group on the periodic table. Another way that the periodic table is arranged is by metals and nonmetals, and this periodic table has been color coded for you. These elements are called the metalloids. They have properties of both metals and nonmetals. Everything to the left of the metalloids is a metal, with the exception of hydrogen. Hydrogen is a nonmetal. Other than hydrogen, all of the other nonmetals are to the right of the metalloids. The majority of the elements on the periodic table are considered metals. These are the properties of metals and nonmetals. Think about aluminum foil. It is solid at room temperature. It's a good conductor of heat and electricity. It has luster, which means that it's shiny. It's malleable, which means that it's bendable. And it's ductile, meaning you can draw it into wires. So those are the common properties of metals. While there are some exceptions, nonmetals tend to be gases at room temperature. They are poor conductors of heat and electricity. And if you do find a solid nonmetal, you'll find that it is brittle, meaning that if you try to bend it, it's going to break instead of bend. Some of the groups on the periodic table have special names, and you should memorize these. These are the alkali metals found in group 1. The alkaline earth metals are in group 2. The halogens are in group 17 and the noble gases are in group 18. This center section, which is made up of groups three through 12, these are called the transition metals, and these below the table are called the inner transition metals. You should be aware of where the inner transition metals fit into the table. If you follow the numbers 55, 56, 57, 58 is down here through 71, and then it comes back up to here. The inner transition metals actually fit into this space here. However, we put them below the table for convenience to make the table easier to print. Those are the major parts of the periodic table. Stick around as we look at trends in ions and try to determine how we can use the location of an element on the periodic table to determine how it will bond with other elements.